Hey everyone, Carrie Beck here with Family eBiz, where we help you start or grow your online business so that you can basically have the freedom that you want in your life. Today, I am so excited. Y'all are in for a treat. Tracy Beavers is here with me, and we're going to be talking about a topic that all of y'all are always saying, that is my biggest challenge. I need more eyes on my products and on my business. So Tracy, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, Carrie. Well, this is going to be great. She's got some great ideas on your getting out there so that you are more visible online. But then also we're going to talk a little bit about email growth. And y'all know I am all big into using that email list. Before we dive into this, Tracy, could you just tell people a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Tracy Beavers. I am a business and sales coach in Little Rock, Arkansas. And my emphasis with my clients is to help them gain massive visibility online um, using all organic strategies, no paid ads, and all of the visibility goes directly to grow their email list. That is awesome. I do know that you haven't always been an entrepreneur. You were in the corporate world, but then you turned entrepreneur. And I will say one of the things people always talk to me about is they want freedom. And yes. so I'm going to assume that you got a little bit more freedom in your life because I saw you went over to Europe and I don't remember <laughs> if it was Italy or Spain or something. So what she's saying really does work. So yes, that's you're exciting. Right. I you know, I finally, I, I have over 20 years of experience when I was in corporate in marketing and sales and business development, but I just got fed up with it because I, I knew I didn't have true control over my time being in a corporate structure, but I, I thought that being in sales and marketing and having a commission structure, I had control over my money. And it, the final straw was when the C, there's a CEO that I was working for. He brought me over to their company to gain them market share. And I gained them 86% of the market the first year I was there. And he just flat out said, well, I didn't think you were going to be that successful. And I'm going to change the compensation plan um, and basically lower my pay. And I thought, you know what? I don't have control over my money either. And it took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I have been an entrepreneur off and on my whole life doing different things. Um, nothing really stuck. And, you know, there was that safety net of corporate that was kind of, you know, good at the time. Um, but I just got sick of it. And we are a dual income household. And so there was no way that I could just quit to come, come be a business coach in the online space and not make any money. Um, so I had to build alongside my corporate career. So for um, a year and a half, almost two years, I built alongside my corporate career until I could fully exit. Uh, but it's been worth it. Yeah, uh, we went this past spring. Our son studied in Spain for a semester. So we went over to Madrid on spring break to see him. And it was nice to not have to ask anybody for any time off. And then his girlfriend was in Paris the same semester. And so when her classes ended at uh, the beginning of May, I went over to Paris and spent a week with her there. And once again, it was nice to not have to ask anybody for time off. And, you know, my mom, uh, she, my dad passed away last fall and I've been spending more time with her, helping her around the house, getting her finances in order and, you know, just making sure she's got everything she needs. And that's been really great too. So, you know, even though I work a lot more hours, I think that, depending on the, the week and what's going on in the business. Um, I do work a lot more hours than I did in corporate, but I get to pick those hours and um, it feels better building something for myself. That is so awesome. And you do have a little bit more control. Y'all know me, I, I'm always off with grandkids, but I can take this laptop and work and yep. I can help babysit or do whatever. And so, you know, we all have different things in our life that we want to do. So, well, I know part of growing this business is just getting out there, visibility. And people are like, I'm, actually, I was just in a mastermind group and one of the girls is trying to figure out, well, where do I get these people, you know? So yeah. can you tell people, what are, are there some just little tips that you could share as far as visibility and um, once they get out there, are there things that they should be looking for to build that relationship? Yeah. So um, it really depends on the platform that they're wanting to grow on. Um, I always suggest that if you're new to the online space, you pick one platform, you go all in on it and master it before you try to be on any other platforms. Because if you try to do too many platforms, you're just gonna exhaust yourself and stop. And as part of 
success with visibility is consistency and alongside that, a great big helping of patience because these are organic strategies and that takes time and we've got to decide what we can do, decide what our bandwidth and our time allows us to do, and then make sure it's something we can be consistent with day in, day out, week in, week out. So when I first started out, Facebook was my platform. Um, I didn't really ever get into Instagram um, and LinkedIn at that time, this was years ago, was really just for people that were searching for jobs or wanted to be recruited for a job. Now it's completely changed. Um, and my team and I are working to deepen our visibility on LinkedIn and maximize that platform. But when I first started out, it was Facebook. That was it. That was all I could handle working alongside a full-time job, two busy kids. That was it. So one of the things that is really important to do for visibility is to create social media content and create enough that you are visible, but not so much that you lose your consistency. So with my clients and students, um, you know, they say, well, gosh, I can't, I can't create seven days worth of content every single week. And I said, okay, cool. Don't do that. What can you do? Can you create two to three social media posts per week to keep you posting and consistent on the platform of your choice? And you want that social media content to point to your email list. So sometimes our social media content is just simply asking for engagement to get people to engage, to answer a question. Sometimes it's silly stuff like this or that, or, you know, gosh, we posted something um, about, do you prefer a PC or do you prefer a Mac? That got so much engagement, it was unbelievable. It was a silly little post we did, but people are very um, opinionated about their laptops. Um, so it's stuff like that, that can get you visibility and engagement. But then also, you know, what, what are you posting that could lead to your email list? Is it book a free info call with me? What's your call to action? It could be um, book a free info call. It could be come join my free Facebook group. It could be come listen to my latest podcast episode. That is if your podcast is dialed in for list growth, um, both on the audio, it's audio and in your show notes. Um, it could be, hey, I've got this free lead magnet for XYZ and you uh, write the copy for it and offer the lead magnet. Um, and so the other thing is on, uh, on Facebook, especially, you wanna make sure that you have dialed in your Facebook personal profile for list growth. And a lot of people are hesitant to do that. They're like, Tracy, that's my personal profile. It's my friends and family. They're gonna get mad or they're gonna judge me if they see me doing things for my business. Well, probably not they're probably not paying that much attention to you. And so what I teach is let's use that Facebook personal profile as a visibility strategy and a list growth funnel for you. And what I mean by that is, and they can, uh, your listenership can go and check out my Facebook personal profile. I'm Tracy Lane Beavers on Facebook, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, my, my intro is all dialed in saying exactly who I serve, how I serve them. Um, so people that land on my personal profile know exactly what I'm all about. They also have all the links there for me of all the ways to connect with me and follow me and, and or DM me or email me if they want to. And my cover photo is the key to the whole thing because my cover mm -hmm. photo always showcases something that leads to my email list. That is awesome. I was writing notes so I can remember <laughs> everything that she said. She just told you all about 10 things you can do. <laughs> Even if you just stay within the platform that you choose, I know for me, I can't do it all either. I actually right. chose my platform based on my audience because yeah. I asked them where they were and they yeah. always Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. I was like, okay, I guess I'm going on Facebook. Yep. But if someone doesn't necessarily have a big audience, do you have any suggestions on how to choose, you know, do they go to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or, or wherever? How would you encourage them to choose the best platform for them? That's a great question. And it, you're exactly right, Carrie. It depends on where their audience is. It also depends on what kind of business they have. So for example, if, if they are a crafter, um, an artist, a quilter, um, somebody that is demonstrating how to do something, YouTube is great for that. So is Instagram. Um, but if their audience is on LinkedIn, on Facebook, 
they need to pay attention to that as well. One of my um, students, uh, Beverly, she came through my Business Visibility Made Easy program, and that's where I teach. I teach Facebook. That's my jam. That's my platform. Every strategy that I teach in that program pertains to Facebook. She took every strategy I taught her, and she took it over to LinkedIn. And do you know that a year later, she is rocking LinkedIn so much, she has people hiring her to help them rock LinkedIn as well. Um, so the strategies that we use and that we teach can apply to any platform. You just need to pick the one that's the right fit for, for you. And for Beverly, she helps people write their best resume, prepare for their best job interview ever, find job interviews. So LinkedIn really needs to be her focus. That needs to be her primary platform with maybe Facebook as a secondary or even a podcast as a, as a platform that she could use for visibility. So it really, that's a good question. And it really depends on, you know, who the person is, how are they serving their people? And if they are visual like that, like I have some quilters um, that have been in my program, they're killing it on YouTube. They're killing it. Mm -hmm. you know, makeup, makeup artists, photographers, anybody that's showing how to do something, uh, chefs, um, things like that. YouTube is a great platform for that. That's so good. And that's a great reminder because I know even though I have my people in Facebook, mm -hmm. when it comes to homeschooling and I'm showing how to do a project, how to do a craft or how to do whatever, it's a video. And even if I do it in Facebook, I make sure it gets over there in YouTube because it's such a huge search engine too. But it um, you do have to, there's only so much time in the day. You know, and so yeah, you do have right. to sleep every once in a while. So um, right. I appreciate those little tips on choosing the, yeah, the right you bet. plan. You bet. And oh. there's, um, you know, repurposing your content is very, very important. Speaking of being busy. So one of the methods that I teach is an exercise that I developed while I was building alongside my corporate job because I felt overwhelmed by creating social media content and I wanted to be consistent every week. And I just didn't know how to do that. So what I decided to do was um, an exercise that takes 30 minutes where you end up brain dumping 90 days of content topics in that 30 minute time frame. And so you have one topic per week. You try to get to 12. So that's 12 weeks, which is 90 days, one topic per week. And that's the topic that I would create the content about. And I would create what I call my anchor piece of content, which is your regular piece of weekly content content, whether it's um, a live video training or a podcast or a blog. Uh, I prefer podcast or live video because people can see you, hear your voice, all of that. That really goes a long way to deepening that connection. So what I would do is I would take that one content uh, topic that I picked out for that week, whether I liked it or not. There were weeks I looked at that topic and I went, I don't want to talk about that. But the minute I would try to change topics, that's where the wheels would come off the bus on my consistency. So um, that one topic, I would write my live weekly training because I've been going live every Thursday at 1130 in my Facebook group for years. Write that one Facebook live script. Then from that, I would pull out little tips and tidbits to make a quote graphic, to make a social media post. So if I gave four tips in that Facebook live, I could pull two of them out, make a social media post pull the other two out, make another social media post. So from that one live script, I have a quote, that's a post. I have two other social media posts. And then if you throw in a post about your free Facebook group or your lead magnet, well, look at that. I've got five pieces of content and I've only had to create one live script and everything else came from that. My blog you see on my website is always based on whatever I talked about on my live video. My podcast now, we pull the audio from the live video and that's my podcast. So there's no need to feel like you've got to come up with three different posts every week about three different things. It can all be the same theme. I apologize for that. That was my phone alarm. Um, it could all be the same theme, um, just all based on that one thing, on that one item. That is so good. And you do want, to, I mean, I agree with you because I will like this podcast, you'll also see it on YouTube. You'll see it in our podcast format then it's Spotify and iTunes. My own goal is always to get it to the blog. That part hasn't just made it over there yet, but um, still um, you, do, you don't need to recreate it all. And just oh. and if your topics that your people need help with, that's where you want to focus anyway. 
Exactly. I know we've talked, uh, we've talked about visibility and doing that. And you've mentioned we're going to go, it's always going towards that email list. Can you yeah. tell people a little bit about why it's so important to, you know, grow your email list? Absolutely. So our email list and, and your audience has heard this before, I'm sure a million times, it's not news, but our email list as business owners, and it doesn't matter what kind of business you have. It doesn't matter if you are in the online space like you and I are, or you have a service-based brick and mortar, or you're a real estate agent or a mortgage lender. The, the type of business does not matter. Every business needs to have an email list because at the end of the day, it is truly one of the only assets we own as a business. Social media, building just on social media, just on Facebook, just on LinkedIn, just on Instagram, without having a way to contact your clients yourself is dangerous. Your building's on a very unstable rented property because we don't own those platforms. We don't control the algorithm. We don't control whether or not they're, they're going to get shut down. There was about a year or so ago when Facebook and Instagram went completely dark for about 36 hours. And when the lights came back on and everybody got back online, it was very sad to see. I'm in the Meta Leaders Network Facebook group um, and thousands of business owners in that group lost a lot of money because they couldn't contact their clients. The ones that made money during that dark period were the ones that had an email list. And there was one entrepreneur I know that sent one email to her list in, in that time frame, and she made $14,000. She I don't even think she realized that social media was dark at that time because she had her list. So it is, an, it is a business asset, and it's one that we've got to take seriously. And the other thing is that not only do we have to have a way to contact our clients if social media goes down, but also... What's what better way to stay top of mind um, and have your clients remember you than being in their inbox? And it doesn't have to be every day. I mean, there are some retail stores that will send me three emails a day. And I'm like, okay, this is too much. I'm talking about, you know, at least once a month. Better yet, if they could email their list twice a month, and better yet, if they could email them once a week. But that way, when if you're in my inbox, Carrie, and I know when my best friend wants to homeschool, but she didn't have a clue how to do it. Who do you think I'm going to think of first? I'm going to think of my friend, Carrie Beck, because you're in my, in, you're in my, in, my inbox versus you posting on social media. And I may or may not see that post because a very small percentage of our audience actually gets to see the things we do on social. Mm -hmm. It's important to keep doing those things and be consistent with them. But we've got to get them onto our email list so that we, then we can warm them up and nurture them, build a relationship with them so they convert into buyers when we are ready to go and sell something. Well, and that leads to something else. Like, And I completely agree with everything about growing your email list. You're, that is the only thing you really have some sort of control over. But um, do you have any suggestions? You just said you want to build those relationships. You know, there are some people... All they do is send me promotion, 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 promotion. I go, oh, unsubscribe. Do yeah. you have any suggestions about what to put in some of those emails to actually um, build the relationship so that when you do actually have a product or a launch, they are ready and hungry for it? Yes. So um, I have some clients that prefer to do a newsletter style where there's like four different sections of the email. The first section might be a little quote and they talk about the quote, you know. Um, the second section might be a tip about what's going on in the industry at that time. Um, a third section might be a journal prompt. Whatever your ideal clients are seeking, wanting, and what you can give them that is valuable, that is going to be something they're excited to open up when you email them, that's what you need to think about. For me, I go back to that anchor piece of content that I talked about just a minute ago, my weekly live training script. My email is born off of that as well. If you follow me really, really closely, you'll see a pattern. My Tuesday email to my list is, hey, here's what I'm talking about live on Thursday. This is why you need to join us. This is what we're going to teach you. And then I have a call to action of some kind in the PS because the most read parts of an email are the subject line and the PS. So we have to maximize those and make your emails really skimmable. Don't make a whole big chunky paragraph because 
the person's brain is going to shut off and they're not going to read it. But my Tuesday email is, this is what we're going to talk about live. Then my Thursday email, I send a, a 30 minute warning email that says, I'm going live in 30 minutes, please join me. And then Friday, I email again and say, hey, did you miss my live training? Here's what we talked about. Here's what was great about the interview. Um, my guest revealed X, Y, and Z and hope you have a great weekend. And I give them the replay link. And so my emails are even born off of that one piece of content. And so they, your audience could totally do the same thing. I agree with you. And some of y'all know, because we publish our um, podcast on Monday, so you get an email. I used to go live on Mondays to both my groups. And I finally decided, okay, this, I'm going to do recorded ones. <laughs> I mean, but that was just a life decision more than anything. For I sure. still like going live. I was live this morning with my um, affiliates for our event. But at the same time, I do think choose that content mm -hmm. that it works with you and your schedule. Because I do, yeah. let's just pick on the little homeschool mom that, want, okay, sorry. But, you know, you want to have it, but then you're trying to homeschool. You want your own business. You want to make a part-time income. Yeah. Whatever you choose to do, if you can't be consistent, like for me, I was doing it every Monday. I was consistent. But if you can't choose something that works with your lifestyle, exactly. you know, hundred yes. mm -hmm. so. percent, because otherwise it's just going to suck the joy out of you. I mean, it really is. It's going to start to be a drag. You're going to start to dread it. And that's not good. That's where your consistency falls apart. And yeah, it's just being an entrepreneur is hard enough. So let's, let's do the, let's make it as easy as possible for sure. That is so good. So we're going to sort of wrap it up. Y'all heard Tracy talk about visibility, about choosing your platform. She used Facebook. She's given us some great ideas on that. And we'll put links to wherever she has mentioned, um, you know, like to her Facebook group and that kind of thing. But I also know that you are getting ready to teach a live class. Um, can you tell people just a little bit about what they could expect? And there'll be a link right here below, wherever you're listening, that you could sign up for that live class. Tell people a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So it is um, a live masterclass, and we're going to have four different dates and times to choose from. So you can come and pick the one that's best for you. Um, when, when you show up live, I have two really fun bonuses that I'm going to give you. I don't want to spill the beans on those now, but they're pretty juicy. So when you show up live and you stick with me through most of the masterclass, then we give you the links to those two juicy bonuses. Um, but what I'm going to teach is some, I'm going to dive deeper into some of the visibility strategies that I just talked about and help people come away with actionable tips that they can use. The one thing that frustrates me about attending a webinar or a masterclass is if it's all fluff, it's all theory, and I don't come away at, with that, something I can actually go do. And so I don't do mine that way. I do mine a little different and I actually give people things that they can use. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about my program, Business Visibility Made Easy. It is my eight week group coaching program where I teach over 10 strategies um, for visibility, maximizing your visibility online with ease and building your email list. We want to get you to a point where email list growth and visibility is just running in the background of your business. Um, I grow my email list every single day, but I don't have to think about growing my email list every single day because I have all of my strategies in place. And it's just based on the work I'm doing each day in my business, the visibility and list growth take care of themselves. So I'm really excited about it. I hope everybody will join us. Well, and I have to tell you, I have been to one of Tracy's master classes and she is not fluff. Y'all know I'm all about, we have got to, we, we need to share things that really work and strategies. And so I, I remember going, honestly, I left that class and I went to look at my personal profile um, photo cover, whatever it's called um, on Facebook, just so I could, um, see if I could start to implement some of the things that she was doing as well. So um, thank you so much for doing this. You bet. Thanks Sorry for having that. me. Y'all know we just have real life and people come and go and that's just yeah. the way it will be. It's but, okay. Um, I'm surprised my doorbell hasn't rung. You're absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we true. So home, true. Right? I mean, this is it. We work from home. That is true. Well, um, thank you for being here. And if y'all, I highly recommend signing up for her free class. And like I said, wherever you're listening to this, you can um, get the link to be able to do that. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, Carrie. All right. And I'm Carrie Beck with Family eBiz. We'll talk to you next time.